Welcome to our life advice Q&A session that we are doing here at Team Vulnerable. My name is Emmanuel and this is my amazing wife, Becca. Hi guys. We here at Team Vulnerable are committed to helping married couples overcome porn addiction as a team. And we have a free program that we want you to go through. We want you to get started with right now, right now. Just end the video, get in it. It's in the comments below. Go ahead, get that program. It is free, get started. It's for you to go through together. And it's an amazing program that's gonna help you overcome your porn problem. Now, if you have any questions, we're gonna do a Q&A session tonight message us on Instagram or comment on any of our videos on Instagram or YouTube or feel free to email us at, what's the best email? Support at teamvulnerable.com. Okay. We'll put it in the comments. Perfect. And all these questions, by the way, are anonymous. So we never say anyone's name. We never say, you know, John Smith on, you know, 112 Deer Drive or anything. We never <laughs> do anything like that, okay? So just so you know, they're always anonymous. And if you have any questions, go ahead and message us. And then without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's jump in. So our first question is this, my husband doesn't want to quit watching porn. So they say, my husband has been watching porn his whole life. He's 35 and we have two kids. He says it's normal and doesn't want to quit. I've told him before that I don't like that he does it and he just doesn't care. What should I do next? <sighs> well, unfortunately, this is way more common than you would think. And it's really sad to even say that. The first thing that you need to understand is your husband is sick. Like he is sick in the mind. He is sick, like someone sick dying of something. Like in his mind, it is all screwed up and you need to realize that. And the next thing you need to realize is you can only control yourself. You cannot force him to take the medicine, to be better. You cannot force him to overcome this. All you can do is be there to support him. Now, the last part is this. You need to make sure that you're not enabling him. And you may think, well, I've told them I don't like it. Well, I've told them this. Well, I told them. Well, you need to set a clear parameter of what is allowed and what is not allowed. Because if you're just saying, well, hey, I don't like it. Okay, well, there's things that Becca doesn't like that I do, right? That doesn't mean I'm going to stop, right? I don't know. Maybe eat too many ice cream cones each week from Chick-fil-A. That's one I'm working on right now. But if she said, hey, if you do that again, then we're going to have big problems. And this is your limit or this is what you're able to do, then I would stop eating so many ice cream cones. So those would be the big three that I would say right there. Also, I would just challenge you to examine how have you been in those conversations with your husband where he shared, hey, you know, I, I don't want to stop this. What was, what was the feelings in those conversations? How did you approach him? Like, because we didn't we didn't get this from what you wrote in here, but this is actually something similar. We've heard this from multiple people, this sentiment of just like, hey, my husband doesn't want to stop. And that feels so, so tough. You know, that wasn't my scenario, but there are a lot of people out there. So in that conversation, were you coming at it from a point of, hey, I'm understanding you and I'm calmly asking you, like, hey, tell me your heart, like, mm -hmm. explain, you know, like, why do you want to do this? Like, asking your husband, why do you feel the need to do this? You know, it is such an emotional thing. So it's like zero blame, zero anything on you if you've been really upset or maybe you walked in on him, you know, watching mm -hmm. porn and it was just super emotional. I get it. I felt all those things of just like, I'm freaking pissed off. I feel less than because you've been doing this. So I don't blame anyone who, you know, has a negative reaction and comes at it in like this shaming way. But when you do that and you come at it like, rah, 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 you know, that's only going to exacerbate the problem really, because it's just going to make him want to go, well, I need to keep doing this and I'm, you know, I feel a lot of shame about this. Mm -hmm. So I would just examine that since we don't really know the context of how those conversations have gone. Um, and then two, maybe they, maybe you have been super understanding and you've been approaching it really calmly. Um, but just think about it as like planting of seeds and just, you know, like doing the research, finding out different things and being like, hey, like I know this is something you're struggling with, but you know, like check out our other videos and like just share stats and just start planting those seeds of like why you believe what you do, that it's not right to watch. 
and just slowly start, you know, having those conversations in calm times and, you know, really trying to understand him and plant those seeds that hopefully eventually you can get him to change his mind where he's going, hey, you know, I... I am rethinking this whole thing and you know maybe I am open to taking the team vulnerable course that doesn't happen overnight it's not like this oh bam I go from being compulsively watching this thing or addicted to this thing to oh I'm completely done with it but if you view it as just hey I'm going to continue standing firm in my ground and saying what I believe or saying, hey, I found this software, Covenant Eyes, I want to put it on our um, devices. Like, I, I don't want you to be watching it as much. Just just keep doing the research, keep watching our videos, and just keep planting those seeds. And, you know, we'll be, we'll be thinking of you guys and, and praying for you that he would just come around. But I know that's a really, really tough spot to be in. So I'm sorry to hear that. Hmm. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into the next question. I want to do the program, but I don't have the money to get started. What can you do to help me out? Well, we have very, very good news. The program is now free. It's free. The entire thing. All right. The entire course. You can get that in the uh, description below right there. Start it right now. Start it right now. Get yeah. get off this video. Get on that right now. Seriously. <laughs> you know, we had just recently been approved to be a nonprofit. So our whole model, we've just said, you know what? We want to make this free. We want to get this out to as many people as possible. And those who go through and get that value, if you feel like you want to donate and you know keep paying that forward to the next person, go ahead and go do that. So it's free. It's in the description. Get started. Don't wait. The whole course, the whole thing. So do that. We want to make that available to you. Okay, next question. Can I still masturbate? All right, well, here we go. I've been trying to quit for a long time and I've been able to for decent stretches, call it three to four weeks. However, at some point I need to get off and my spouse doesn't always want to have sex when I need to. So I feel that this is okay, but I wanted to get your thoughts on this. You know, one of the big things with this is porn teaches us that whenever you want it, the woman needs to be ready to go right there at the drop of a hat. And that is just not reality. That is just not the real world. That's a screen. That's a simulation. That's fake. That's not the real world. So that's the very first thing that you need to understand right there. The second thing is go ahead and masturbate, but do it without porn and do it without any bad thoughts or, you know, bad things going on in your head. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to start and you're going to go, well, I'm not really, you know, it's nothing really working. All of a sudden your mind's going to start to get to work. And all of a sudden that thought is going to lead into you watching porn again. So it's a very, very slippery slope. And... The, the thing I want to ask you is, where is your heart during all of that? You know, if your heart is, you know, how can I think of something really, really raunchy to get off to? And, you know, what can I look up? Because I need it. I need Sex is about love, connection, and intimacy. And I want you to remember that. That's a really, really important thing. I also want you to remember that if you truly need it, I need it, like SpongeBob about to, you know, blow out of Sandy's, you know, treehouse right there. If you truly need it, your body can get rid of that during a wet dream. Like seriously. And if it's truly that big of a problem, let me ask you this as well. Have you truly put in any effort on your end with your spouse? Or is it just, hey, I want to have sex right now. Well, she wasn't in the mood. Uh, okay, I'm done. Have you put in any effort? All right. I want you to think about that. So think about that next time that comes up. I will tell you this. You're not going to die from not jerking off in that moment right there. What I would tell you to do is wait until that next day, talk things through with your wife, examine where your heart is at, and don't masturbate. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get into that shame cycle and you're going to get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So don't do it. Back on anything you had on there? Yeah, I just feel like, you know, society has really pushed this message of loving yourself. Hmm. Love yourself. And it's, it's very, it's good. Because it's like, you do want to have that self-love, but the way that as a society we're going about it is actually more damaging. Oh, I'm going to love myself into obesity. I'm going to love myself into this porn addiction. You name it. It's just a lot of things that have been started with, oh, well, I'm just, you know, oh, loving myself. And then it just turns really, really negative. So it's not a, 
you know, it's just sold that this is such a norm that everybody has to do it. You have to masturbate. That's what's normal. Every woman out there has a vibrator. Every man is watching porn. That is what society will sell you. And we're just here saying that's not reality. You don't have to do it. We haven't done it in over a year. Guess what? We're living just fine. <laughs> so it's not necessary. Point blank. So Not sex you're talking about. We've done no, that. No, we've had lots of sex. <laughs> I meant masturbating. <laughs> All right. Next question. My spouse is okay with me looking at porn. I just don't want to have ED. So the question says, hi, guys. I've been looking at porn since I was in middle school, and now I'm in my 40s. My wife does not have a problem with me looking at porn. She says all guys do it. She thinks it's better than me cheating. My question is, I have been having ED issues for the last few years and I've tried Viagra and Hims. They work fine, but I think my porn watching may be contributing to this issue. I don't want to stop watching porn, but I also don't want to have ED and to be taking pills. What should I do for my unique circumstance? So let's really break this thing down. You want to be cheating on your wife virtually with these other women. Let's call it what it is. That's what it is. I need you to understand the gravity of that. You want to dishonor her. You want to have a different relationship than the one that you're in right now. It's not just this okay thing to be looking at porn and to this, and it's better than me going to the strip club or me getting a prostitute or this or that. It's just a virtual prostitute is all that's going on right there. You've been seeing what this has been doing to you physically, but I want you to think about what this has been doing to you mentally. You know, one of the things we talk about in our program is rape myths. Hey, she was asking for a wear in that. Hey, she went home with them, so it's fine. Hey, I mean, what do you expect? You know, you know what? These rape myths are significantly increased when men watch porn. What it's doing to your body physically, what it's doing to your mind mentally, it is taking so much more than you know right now until it's all gone and then you go wait a minute what happened I was just looking at the screen I was just looking at the and then it's all gone it will take so much more than you could ever imagine the other thing is you're using this as a painkiller let's call this what this is you have a wife it's not like you're the single guy nowhere and I need to try to jerk off or something no no you have a wife and Let's just examine how sad this is for a second. She's saying, oh, it's okay that he he does this instead of cheating on me. Man, your wife needs love. She needs love for herself. She needs that respect for herself. You need to be the man that you were designed to be and to step up and say, honey, I love you. You, I, I don't need to put my eyes on someone else. You are everything to me. You need to build up her self-esteem because think about how low that is. That's not a cool thing that your wife is okay with you looking at porn. That's a really sad thing. And that might be a sad reality that she goes, well, this is as as good as it gets for me. You know, a husband who's watching porn all the time and jerking off to all these women. Man, I wish I could have him look at me, you know, and, and want me. But, you know, at least he's not leaving me. Man, that's sad. And my challenge to you is to step up. And to stop thinking about this as an ED issue. I'm glad ED is getting you to think about stopping to do this. But this is so much bigger than your ED. This is about love and respect to your wife. Sex is about love, connection, and intimacy. And you can have such an incredible relationship. And I just want you to remember that. Becca, anything? Well, Mm. I think it's... I think it's... I'm glad you wrote into us. I'm glad that you are you know, making that step of actually contemplating this and thinking about how this may be affecting you. And right now you're only seeing the physical, like Manny mentioned, and there's definitely so many mental costs. What's the cost of, you know, not having as good of a relationship as you, as you could be, you know, right now you're settling for this, let's just call it its average existence. This is Mm -hmm. what most people are going through. Yeah. To be honest, this yeah. is this is the average experience right now with marriage. And it's sad that that's what it's come to. But I just say good job of starting the process of mm. thinking about this. And you're going, I don't want to quit. Yeah, I mean, let's just relate it to someone who's really struggling with reining in what they're eating. Do you want to stop eating the donuts and the candy and the whatever? 
No, but you realize, hey, I'm getting unhealthy. I'm going to the doctor more often. Whatever it is, this is that initial catalyst for you of, hey, I'm struggling with ED and I'm young. I shouldn't be. So, hey, this is the catalyst. But it's just like keep educating yourself. Start going through the program. Even if your wife isn't fully on board or or really pushing you to to, um, get better with this, it's like do it for yourself. Because I'm, I'm reading this and I know you want to make that change. Mm-hmm. You want to be a better man. You want to have that better relationship with your wife. You're just going, this is really hard to leave. I've, I've been, you know, mm-hmm. hooked on this thing for a really long time and no one is pushing me. So that can be tough when it's just you, but you know what mm-hmm. you need to do. And our course is going to help reveal some things to you where you're just never going to be able to look at porn the same, really. So Mm -hmm. go into the course right now once you see this, and I think it's going to make a lot of difference for you. And keep us posted on your progress and how you feel about this, too. Absolutely. Love that. So next one right here, it says, I looked at the program, but we don't have the time to go through it together. All right. So it says, I got your guys' course, and thank you for making it free. You are welcome. My issue with your course is me and my wife don't really have that much time together. We work opposite schedules essentially, and when everything is settled down for the day, we're too tired to go through the course. I want to do it, but what should I do for my circumstance when we don't have the time to go through the course? The first thing that I'll ask you is, have you truly, truly time tracked your days? And this is an exercise we go through in the course that you'll get to eventually, but time tracking your days. We as human are terrible judges of how much time we spend on different things. You know, uh, well, I, I was working for like 10 hours today. Really? How much were you truly working? Well, two and a half hours, you know, and there's seven and a half hours that you just wasted that go into the water cooler or the bathroom or checking emails when you didn't need to or on YouTube or whatever that thing is. We are really, really bad at time tracking as humans. So have you truly time tracked your days? Here's the other one I wrote down. Watch the program for 15 minutes a day. And why do I say 15 minutes? Because you've probably been using 15 minutes a day to do something else instead of going through that program. If you catch my drift. Yeah, stop doing that and start doing the program. That's what you need to be doing. The other thing I want to put here is if it's important to you, you will get it done. Bottom line, if it's important to you, you will get it done. And she is not going to be the one that leads you through this program. If she's dragging you through this program, that's not a sign of success right there. You need to step up. You need to be the man that you're designed to be and say, you know what? I need help. I love your support. You know what? No matter what happens, I'm going to go through this course. I'm going to do what it takes. I am going to overcome this. And I would love to have your support. And I'd love to go through this together. So please, if you can join me in this, but if not, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get through this course. And you need to go through the course. And then she sees by your example that you're stepping up and you're doing what it takes. And she's going to want to follow that. So those would be the biggest things I would share there. Yeah, I agree with you that an important thing is just going, hey, whether it's 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, just locking in a time frame of like, I'm just going to do this because, mm-hmm. hey, I'm a mom. Yep. We have two young boys. One is 18 months. One is three months. You know, they are small and it takes up a lot of energy. So at the end of the night, I, you know, for me, it's like, I don't want to, you know, clean the house. And Manny's done a great job of encouraging me. Hey, just do something for mm-hmm. 10 minutes. Yep. So having that small like time that you can commit to where it's just like you can do anything for 10 minutes come on 10 minutes of sleep won't you know make or break you there so just start with something small and just get committed and keep having those wins because just like with you know exercising or whatever once you actually do it especially once you and your spouse start going through some of the exercises that we have on there together, like intentional 10 at night and these different things, it's going to unlock this new level of connection for you guys. And you're going to want to honestly get more of it where it's just like, wow, I haven't, maybe you haven't felt that way or you haven't had these super vulnerable conversations with each other. And in going through the course, you get those and like Manny and I always find this, but at mm-hmm. night when we're talking, it's like, okay, before we turn on TV, let's do our intentional 10, which is an exercise that you can learn about in the course. Sign up now for free. Um, 
but we always do that before we watch TV. Yeah. And then it's like 10 minutes often turns into like 45 minutes. And we're like, oh, we were just talking and having such a good time because it's like, oh, this is so great. We love getting to connect. So just start small. And um, yeah, you know, you, you just got to you just got to get committed and just keep keep chugging along there. I know it could be feel overwhelming when you don't have that set aside but once you minimize it into bite-sized pieces every day it's really it's really very doable and I think the more wins you get the more you're going to want to get into it more each day with your spouse but I totally understand where you're coming from just no excuses keep going absolutely love it all right our last question here tonight says I told my spouse about my porn issue but I don't want to bring up that I messed up the other day says, hi guys, I've been loving the course so far. It's been great, but my issue is I haven't looked at porn since I got started, but I just recently messed up and jerked off. I feel that my wife is doing okay with everything going on, but I don't know how she's going to take it that I messed up recently. <sighs> my big advice for you is to get in the program and we are going to teach her how to support and love you through this process. For any spouse that has been told about this problem that you have, it's a lot for them. That is what we are here for us to help teach them what's going on, what is addiction, how to support someone who has a problem, especially with this issue. We teach them how to love and support you. So get in the program. That's the very first thing. Next is you are not going to overcome this alone. You may think this is a better strategy. I'm not going to tell her and uh, that that's going to make things better. No, no, it's not. You are not going to overcome this on your own and you need their help. So the last thing I would say is, are you following the game plans that we set up for you in the program? Because we have things like the one hour rule. If you mess up within that first hour, you need to tell her. So have you done that? What about the game plan of, if I'm tempted, I will do this instead? Have you put the blockers on your phone? Have you put in all these practices that we have taught you? The bottom line is get in the program and follow the program. Just because you sit in a garage does not make you a car. Just because you go through the course doesn't mean you're going to overcome this. You have to put into practice what we are teaching you. So from the spouse's perspective, um, you know, when Manny and I were going through this, we didn't have a roadmap. We didn't have anyone telling us how to go about this. And we were kind of fumbling our way through. So in the beginning, before we knew all the information we know now, you know, he had some slip ups after telling me. And, you know, there was a, a time where he told me right away. And there was a time where he waited a long time before he told me, oh, hey, I messed up a couple weeks ago. And from both of those experiences, the one that I handled a lot better and wasn't quite so angry about was the one that he told me right away because it's communicating that I'm worth telling the truth to. You know, it's like that's what's the most hurtful about this whole addiction and the hiding of it is being kept in the dark and feeling like I'm not worthy of being told what's what's up what you're struggling with so you just need to keep that door open to being vulnerable like you opened it with having that first conversation and, and starting things off there and that's really great but you've got to just keep it open because whether it's with this or something else down the line you know as you're married there's lots of challenges that come up so you need to be willing to just keep that door open to communication so you really just need to tell her asap and and keep doing that because that trust and feeling like you're worthy of being told the truth is honestly crucial, crucial in getting getting through this process together. So that's my, my two cents. Well, that's all the questions we have for tonight. If you want to write in again, again, comment on YouTube or Instagram or email us. I'll put that email in the comments right there and get the program, get started, get moving forward because you can have freedom from porn. You absolutely can. And you can have a relationship that's stronger than you could ever imagine. And so I want you to have what we have. Get in that course, get in the program, get moving forward. And set aside some time every day that you're gonna do it. Be consistent about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. And if you need anything from us, just let us know we are praying for you and you can have freedom from porn. Get in that program, get started. We'll see you next time. Bye guys.